Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I'm going to complete challenge number three. This is one of the default scenarios that comes with Orbiter 2010. It's located in the uh, 2010 subfolder, and then in there, there's a challenges subfolder. Uh, I already did challenge number one and challenge number two. So now we're going to do number three. Now this challenge, uh, according to the little bit of text that you see when you click on a scenario, it's actually the same challenge as number two, but the difference here is that we are much farther out of plane with the moon. In the uh, challenge number two, you are only, I think it was like three point some degrees out of plane. I think that's actually enough that it still requires an off-plane transfer, but maybe it doesn't. Uh, nevertheless, in this challenge, we're definitely uh, so far out of plane that we uh, definitely want to do an off-plane transfer. So one way that you could complete challenge number two, and I think probably what, uh, if you're very new to Orbiter, probably what you would do is you could go around to the descending node or the ascending node, whichever one comes first, and then do a burn to bring your uh, relative inclination down to zero and then from there transfer to the moon. In this scenario, you definitely don't want to do that since the idea here is to minimize the amount of fuel that we're using. So if we went around to the descending node and did a plane transfer to get into alignment with the moon, we would use uh, just a tremendous amount of fuel. So obviously we're not going to do that. Let's bring up TransX up on both sides. We're going to target the moon and we'll go forward on this side and view the encounter. So we are here, uh, or rather I should say the moon is here, and we're going to cross a node here. We could uh, transfer to the moon like that if we wanted, but if we did, we would have to do a very quick transfer to the moon and we're not try are we trying to save time here or anything? No, we're just trying to save fuel. So if we wanted to go to the moon here, that would be like a, uh, I don't know, maybe 24 hours, 36 hours. It would be pretty quick. We'd, we'd, it would cost us quite a bit of extra fuel. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to warp time forward, and we're going to come around. We're going to wait until the moon comes all the way around to about here. And then what we'll do is we'll do our transfer at that point because then by the time the moon gets over to this this part of the line of nodes uh, we'll have you know adequate time to do a normal low energy transfer or at least as low as in, low energy as is possible so before we do anything at all let's just warp time forward ahead we're going to go at least this far so let's go out to uh 10,000. Let's go to 100,000. It's going to take a while because we've got several days to go. So here at this point, we're basically at a 90 degree angle with the line of nodes. So that's about seven days between this point and that point. So we want to cut that in about half. So right about, like right there maybe. We'll, we might go a little bit shorter than that just to make sure that we don't overshoot the uh, time. So that's going to be good enough. So now we can set up our now we can set up our offplane transfer to the moon. We go over to maneuver, maneuver mode on, put in the normal amount of prograde. It's going to be, you know, 3100 something like that. Now variable over to the date. And we'll go backwards, it'll be faster. Now we're going to move time forward, so plus. And we have to bring this over toward the line of nodes and you can see there we are by if we leave in one orbit we're basically exactly where we need to be so we got timed that out pretty well you can see that has us all the way out to the moon okay now let's uh since i don't remember on from number two let's go to orbit let's reference the moon and let's target the Luna wheel. So it has an inclination of 44 degrees. Is that right? 
I thought it was like equatorial. For some reason that doesn't sound right to me. But let me check. Let's reference the moon. And let's target Luna Wheel. No, I guess that's right. Huh. I wonder if the uh I wonder if between this scenario and number two, if the if the Luna is in a different orbit. Because I could have swore it was equatorial last time. I'll have to I'll have to go back and check on that. So anyway, we just we want to check on that so that we can kind of start thinking ahead as to how we want to arrive at the moon. You know, we do we want to arrive more equatorial? Do we want to arrive at an angle? How do we want to arrive at the moon? So by uh, setting, taking a look now, we can kind of start thinking ahead on that. Okay, let's look at orbit MFD. Actually, let me think about this for just a second. Because when I come back from the moon and go to Earth, if I want to go to the ISS, I can actually target it directly. Yeah, well, I'll think about it more on my way to the moon. Nevertheless, according to TransX at the moment, we're going to arrive with an inclination of about 35.35. It's not going to be really accurate, but we can kind of start thinking about, you know, maybe doing a bit of adjustments as necessary to maybe change our arrival inclination a little bit. So that's out to 39. So that's about 44. That's the correct inclination, but it'll change a bit. But let's check that one more time. What was it? 44.1. Uh, but I don't want to have my minimum altitude quite that low because transx lies. So let's go to outward and just put in a touch of outward one way or the other. Okay, so a little bit of positive outward that helps bring the minimum altitude out and then I'll do a bit of an adjustment here with uh, plane or prograde to bring the inclination down so something like that would be really good so the inclination is exactly correct. It won't hold, and the minimum altitude is about 418. And we know that as we go out toward uh, out toward the moon, that this is going to change. There's actually a way to use um, to use IMFD, so you can basically do a one burn uh, solution to go all the way out to the moon and have everything be correct. But I still have to learn how to use IMFD. So let's go ahead and do this burn view over to target and we're going to warp time forward to get get closer to <clears throat> the time to burn <coughs> if i don't cough in the meantime <laughs> and when we get down to you know three four hundred seconds it's always a good idea to come out of time warp and switch back over to view maneuver go to uh the update variable and hit update and just watch this information before i hit update so it says the minimum altitude is 437, and now we're showing the inclination 43. But when I hit plus, you can see things change a little bit. Now, since I only had to go forward by a couple of thousand seconds, uh, things didn't change too much. But when you warp time forward with by, you know, 5, 10, 20,000 seconds, especially if you have to go forward by a day or more, then all of your uh, transex planning, it just it just won't be that accurate. So when you get closer to the time to actually do the maneuver you definitely want to come to maneuver and do an update let's go to target Translation. and we're going to basically be going prograde so let's be lazy and hit the prograde autopilot for now get our vessel lined up And once everything is centered up, we'll fast forward time to do the burn. Of 
go ahead and leave prograde on just because I only have a few seconds here of time warp. Okay, we're really close to that point, so let's go out to um, let's go to real time. Translation, rotation. And let's rotate the vessel to the green X. And I'll just do the burn manually. I didn't leave myself enough time to set up a burn time calculator. So we're going to do the burn in five seconds. Two, one, and we're burning. What would be cool would be if you could actually um, bring up burn time calculator in like these modes it has time to periapsis, time to apoapsis, and the last mode is time to manual start. It would be cool if you could have a mode that would be time to transex begin burn and then have it inherit that number or that countdown so you could base and, and even actually it would be cool if it could inherit the velocity as well because whenever it says you know 3000 3.1k for example that 3.1k is not exactly uh, 3.1k it's like there it just this this doesn't show all the decimal points basically so it'd be cool if you could have the mode that would inherit the begin burn time and the delta v and then you would just arm it or whatever you have to push over here and then when it comes time to do the transex burn um, you know you still have to center the green x but otherwise it would start the burn on time and then stop it that would be cool Um, time warp forward, get through this couple thousand worth of delta V. And back off time warp here in a second. Center up our green X a little bit better. And reduce main engines here when we get a little bit lower on the delta V. Did I overshoot by three? Was I not paying attention that much? Okay, no, I still have three left. Okay, maneuver mode off. And let's bring up Transex on this side so we can view the encounter, see how we're doing. And we'll do a little bit more translation. That minimum altitude's a bit high, and our inclination's not quite where I want it. So if I just tap translation a little bit forward, then I would say... That's good enough right there. All right, now we're going to fast forward time till we get at, at least out to the halfway point, to the point where Earth is no longer the strongest gravitational source. And I hope I don't get any external noises. It's really nice here today, so I've got the doors and windows opened up. So hopefully there aren't any dogs barking or cars driving down the road or anything like that. I live on a pretty quiet street, but... Feels like spring here in Florida. It's really, really nice out. I should be outside doing something. <laughs> Gravitational influence of the Earth is almost down to the point where it's a weak source of gravity. Now it is. And once that happens, Transex updates a bit and we have some more uh, reliable information to go by. So according to Transex, we are going to arrive with an altitude of 1,100 kilometers. Of course, that's not quite right. So let's actually just warp time forward a little bit at 100 and see what's happening with this number. Okay, currently it says it's going up and the inclination is going down. So let's let's do a mid-course correction here. Bring up Transex over here. We're going to go ahead and turn maneuver mode on. And let's see what uh, our variables do as far as affecting 
the inclination and everything. So that's taking the inclination up closer to 44, which is what we need, and it's bringing the minimum altitude down. I think it was 44.1. Let's reference the moon. Target the space station. 44.13. How could it possibly have changed? That's weird. Anyway. Just a little bit more prograde here. It's bringing down the minimum altitude, and that's also what I want. And we'll go with that because we don't I don't know at this point how much the altitude is going to be affected, so we'll just kind of set the inclination. And let's rotate. Now, somebody told me that with this uh, sphere, you can tell which way to rotate because if the X is at the top, okay, if you are facing, if your orientation of your vessel is heads up, at least this is how I understood it, so let me check. So first of all, let me go heads up. and get level with the center thing here. Now, since this X is here, that means I need to rotate to the right and I need to pitch down. That's what I understood. Actually, I know that would be true because it's it's going to be it's going to be a prograde burn basically. I do not understand that. That is, it's like it's it's like it's always exactly backwards. You would think at some point I would get it right, but it's so weird. I guess I was right, I just didn't go around far enough. Anyway, so I've got the green X centered up now. Again, we don't have to worry about the timing because we are uh, in between bodies and you know there's a long way between us and the moon, so a matter of two, three, four, five minutes on these types of burns just doesn't matter. But what I but I what I like to do is to go to the maneuver and reset the date. That just makes sure that everything's right now, this very second, and we can see that things weren't really impacted. Okay, now just a little bit of a burn here. We've only got four meters a second to go. And I overshot that just a tad. Okay, view over to maneuver and off. And now let's warp time forward again, get closer to the moon. Keeping an eye on our inclination here. Try to arrive at the moon in plane. Actually, out of curiosity, something else I might be able to do. If I do an adjustment on that side and go Luna, is it just B1? Luna B01? I forgot what it's called. I 
Luna Obi Wan. Okay, so in stage two, ships Luna Obi Wan might be able to use Transex to help us plan this out a little bit better so that we can arrive at the moon not only in plane with the space station, but we could actually time it so that we arrive right next to it. I've done that before coming back from the moon and just going straight to the ISS so that you don't get in orbit first. You just go straight to it. It's a pretty neat trick. Okay, so VW. Let's look at setup. Let's go to uh, graph projection and change that to... Focus, and let's look at scale to view target. Okay, so according to Transex, we're going to arrive at the moon, and we'll be 3,350 kilometers away from the uh, Luna wheel, but that's just terribly unreliable at this point. But let's see what if we can do a maneuver to figure out how to fix that a bit. Just bear with me for a moment while I think about things. I'm thinking that this is showing that I'm currently, well, I am currently out of plane. But with an additional four meters a second, I can that shows where I will be. Let me go to view, setup, and view different uh, graph projection. Let me do plan. View, maneuver. Change plane. See what I should be, what I'm expecting to see is this blue ring which represents the orbit of the lunar wheel. I want to see it wrapped around the moon. And that's not happening, and I'm not entirely sure why. So let me reset plane change. Okay, so that has us within a thousand meter kilometers of Okay. And now uh, 
prograde. Okay, that has me right there next to the Luna wheel, but we're definitely going to, the timing on this one's going to matter, so let me reset the date. And let's bump it forward so we can do this maneuver in like five minutes. So instead of 3050, we'll do it at 33100. Actually, that's good enough there. Okay. Just a little bit more on the prograde. Has us down to 19 kilometers there. We'll go with that because I, I don't really think this will hold well enough for for it to matter to get down to just one or two kilometers at this point. So let me go ahead and do this maneuver. That's why is that so long ago? Okay, let me go back to date. I have this in the future, so, oh, uh, it might be because we're in a different stage or something, I'm not sure, let's just do the maneuver. So since I'm heads up and the green X is over there, I should have to rotate left. I guess so. Okay, I'll bring the X up a little bit. And I'm going to do the burn now. So 24 meters a second. And after this burn's complete and we get everything checked out, I'm going to go ahead and end this part of the video since it's coming up on a half hour. kind of thought I'd actually be able to complete the whole mission, but I, halfway out I decided I wanted to try to catch the uh, Luna wheel <clears throat> when I arrive at the moon. Instead of getting into orbit and doing all that first, it'll be better if I can just catch it as soon as I show up there. So let me turn maneuver mode off. And let's just translation. a little bit of translation. You can see that's bringing the closest approach down. A little bit of up-down translation. A little bit of lateral. And I think we'll go with that for now. Okay, so let me uh, pause the simulation. If you like this part of the video, please hit the uh, like button down below, leave a comment, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, and look for a link to my Facebook page down in the description below. And I will see you in the next part, which I'm going to record right now.